everyone. My name is Ellie and I'm part of the education team here with Forest Park Forever. This week on Branching Out, we're talking about food chains. The term food chain is one that we use to describe relationships between organisms that depend on one another for food. An example would be grass that gets eaten by a rabbit and then the rabbit being eaten by a hawk. All three of those organisms are part of a food chain. We have the grass, which is a primary producer. We have the rabbit, a primary consumer. And then we have the hawk, a predator. You can probably think of other examples of food chains because they're found all over the world. And sometimes you find them in unexpected places. Today, we're here in Forest Park exploring the Deer Lake Riffles. As I walk up to the stream, I can see plants growing out of the water. These are the primary producers in our food chain. Amazing organisms that can take the sun's energy and turn it into food. Primary producers are in every food chain and they help to feed every animal on earth, including humans. So where are the animals in this food chain? In order to find them, we're gonna have to go under the surface of the water. Freshwater habitats around the world include aquatic insects, insects that live in the water. We're gonna explore this area today and see what kind of aquatic insects we can find. As I start looking for aquatic insects, I'm going to look for rocks in places where the water is moving fast and where it's relatively shallow. As I flip over each rock, I'll look closely to see if I can find anything moving around. Let's take a look at what we found. The first organism that I'm gonna show you is a mayfly. This is a primary consumer, so that means it's going to eat the plants that live here. This organism is going to scrape along the rocks and get little bits of algae and other plants that live here as a way to find food. You can see its flat body makes it a perfect creature to live on a rock because it can hug tightly against the rock and that way it doesn't get carried away by the water. Let's take a look at another aquatic insect that we find here at the Deer Lake Riffles. And this one is a personal favorite. What I have here is called a net spinning caddisfly. And these organisms also live in fast moving parts of the stream. They're also primary consumers. That means that they're going to eat the plants and the other organic material that we find in this part of the park. But what's special about this organism is that it spins a tiny net using silk and it will hold that net up into the current so that it can catch tiny bits of plants and other organic material that's flowing through the water. Another fascinating behavior of caddisflies is that they'll use the silk that they produce to build little rock houses for themselves. Here we have a damselfly and this is the predator in our aquatic food chain. These guys will eat just about anything that's smaller than they are. And they're sit and wait predators, which means that they'll sit on rocks in the water and wait for other small organisms to come by. Then they have specialized mouth parts that shoot out to grab anything that gets too close and pull it back in where they can chew it up. All humans are a part of food chains too. We eat many different kinds of plants and animals, and we depend on healthy lands and waters to help us produce that food. Our survival depends on having a planet that can support lots of different food chains, just like the ones we explored today at Deer Lake. Thanks for branching out with us today and learning more about food chains. The next time you're outside, notice the plants and animals around you and think about what food chains they might represent. Be sure to visit our online nature classroom where you can find all of the resources that we're sharing. See you next time!